Um, I also have a bunch of colors. I'm going to be using a whole lot of them just for this opening part here. So let's focus first on the interpreting. We'll get to the constructing later in the exercise. Okay. Remember what this is called. This is AM4. AM4. Which is about uh, modeling linear relationships. So the idea is you've got two quantities. Do you want to? And we want to be able to produce a model that's nice and simple enough to interpret, um, but we can still use to solve problems. Yeah. I want us to remember, when you have a look at something like this, which you guys actually told me uh, on, on Monday, you reminded me, oh, we've looked at these kinds of things before. When you're thinking about straight lines, we represent with these guys. I want you to remember what all four of those pronumerals actually mean. So you know how on a Cartesian plane you've got two axes. Each one is represented by one of these, but which one is which? Which one's the up-down one? The Y. It's the Y? Okay, I'll come to that in a second. Uh, I promise I'll get to that, it's just my color. Okay, so this guy here, this is the up-down, so we're going to say this is the vertical axis. And then you've got your horizontal one, I need a new color, which of course is the X, right? So this one is our side-to-side -side one here. Horizontal. And so we compare x and y values, coordinates, according to the different axes. And then we come to m and b. Now it's really important we remember x and y are variables, they can change. But m and b in a particular situation, they are actual numbers. We choose them like 3 and negative 1 or 118. They're numbers and they don't change in a particular question. So Sandy, you said B. B stood for, what does it represent? Very good. Which in this context, because Y we just remembered is about the vertical axis. Eliza. Thanks. That means it's really the intercept on the vertical axis, and that'll be really important down here. And that leaves us with M. Thank goodness I have one last color. What does M signify? Gradient, very good. So the worst chosen abbreviation of all time, because what does M have to do with gradient? Um, gradient, also known as slope. So this is how steep or shallow the line is, uh, whether the line is increasing or decreasing. So that's what each of these four quantities means. Now, let's think about an actual situation. So for example, think about, say, the cost according to, say, the number of um, kilometers you've driven in a taxi, plus a, plus a fee for actually flagging the taxi and actually getting them to come to you. Okay? If we label each of these, right, then n, the number of, uh, the number of actual uh, cost per kilometer, it's like some cents per kilometer, right? That's actually a cost that's a rate, isn't it? It's like kilometers per minute or kilometers per, uh, Sorry, dollars per kilometer or dollars per minute. So this guy here, n for the number, is really a rate. So it's not just like gradient means something geometrically on the graph. But here, if you actually have a model, and if you read that and it said like 0.1x, then the rate is 0.1 dollars per kilometer or dollars per minute or whatever it happens to be. The key thing is that we can interpret it. It's not just a gradient like some visual thing, this has a meaning in a particular situation. Over here on the left hand side, this guy here, if we said C for cost, then this is what we call the dependent variable. Do you remember this phrase? It's something that changes, it varies, but it depends on something else, which I'm going to get to in a second. Okay? So the cost is a dependent variable in this case. It's variable because it changes depending on how far you go, how long you're in the taxi, and it's dependent because what it depends on is this other value over here. Okay? If cost is the dependent variable, what does that make x? Wrong color. It's the independent variable. It can change however it pleases, and so on the horizontal axis, that's what you label accordingly. So x might be, say, time or distance, and the key is that it changes independently, and this is what changes in response to that. So we call it the independent variable. 
Okay. Now, lastly, there's F. Okay. Now, I said, for example, when you flag a taxi, you wave it down, they, they charge you this cost no matter how far or close you're going to go. So in other words, what's my color? Orange. In other words, and this is why I've called it F, not just for flag for or fee, it's a fixed quantity of some kind, a fixed quantity. You can see that this value over here isn't going to change if I have x is 100 or x is 0. It stays whatever number it is, no matter how long you go. So it's a fixed quantity. I'm going to say quantity rather than um, cost or distance or that kind of thing, because the point is we can use these equations to model anything. OK. So you can see this is just in geometric terms, x and y and all that kind of thing, y intercept, they mean something on the graph. But this is, and that's why I've called it interpreting, this is what does it mean in a particular situation? So how do we use this? Where's my remote? Have a look at this, which is the first question um, in this exercise for me, okay? You've got this company that's trying to model a situation which is to do with costs and number of ties that they produce. Okay. The daily cost can be modeled, mark that word, so this is going to give us an idea of what's happening in this situation, using the straight line equation, and there it is. Okay. Explain each term in the formula. Now, that explanation is exactly what we were talking about here. Don't say that it's the y-intercept. What does the y-intercept actually mean? Speaking of which, let's do, all this, let's all do this question together. Number one, what is, which number is the y-intercept in this case? It's 1,200, this number on the end, right? But what does y-intercept in this situation actually mean? What does it indicate? Like where the line starts is the y-axis. Yeah, so if we were to draw this, which I think we are going to have to do in part C, when we do draw it, 1,200 is where I'm going to be up and down to collab with the axis. But have a look back up at the question. Where does the number $1,200 appear in the question? Very good, so that's what we were just saying, right? You have to spend, or they have to spend, $1,200 every single day, regardless of how many ties they actually make. Just as a quick question, why is there a fixed cost like that? Why would they, what kinds of things would contribute to a fixed cost of $1,200 per day? Say it again, sir. Electricity. electricity. Now, interestingly, electricity can have some fixed costs. We've actually talked about this back in the focus study on resources. Um, I think they call it a, oh, what's it called? I forget the name. But it's something they charge you, even if you don't use electricity, okay? But usually I think we would say the more electricity you use, the more it's going to cost. So I wouldn't call that a fixed cost. What else might be more fixed in this situation? Renee, what were you gonna say? Labor costs and rent. Okay, so people who are there, and the cost of actually having the property, they're not going to change all that much. Even if you make more ties, they're just making the machines work. It's the same number of people who are there. Uh, I'm just pointing that out so that you know that this $1,200, it comes from somewhere. It's not just some random number. OK, so when we explain, this is part A, uh, we would say $1,200 is the fixed daily cost. It doesn't change no matter how many times you make. You can see there's the 3n, 3n. Now, that's one term. It says explain each term. So 3n, where's the 3 come from? $3. Okay, good. So you can see that's the rate, remember? $3 per tie. This is dollars per tie. You can see what makes this a rate. You're comparing two different quantities, right? They're not the same unit. So 3n is, okay, how would you finish this sentence? So this is the cost, is the, I would say the variable cost of producing ties. Because it's $3 for every tie. So that's why it's variable, because more ties means more cost, as opposed to the fixed cost that we mentioned up here with 1200 So that's the actual tie production cost. Um, we've got one last term. It's over there on the left-hand side. What's C? Yeah, I think total cost is the perfect word. Is the total cost, total running costs of the factory. It has to include your production costs and also your fixed costs altogether. Okay. Now, part B. We can do this pretty quickly. 
Completing this table of values, because they go up in consistent numbers, these numbers are actually going to be quite simple to do. We don't even necessarily need a calculator, I don't think. So we're going to have an N row, number of ties, and a C row, total cost. Here's an easy one. The first one, if you don't make any ties, it's going to be that 1,200, that y intercept we were mentioning before. So let me catch up a little bit. There we go. If you don't make any ties, your cost will be 1,200. Okay. We're going up in lots of 50 because it's a bit silly to think about a tie factory just making one tie at a time. So that's why it's in big chunks. So if every tie costs $3 to make, how much are just the ties going to cost? Just the ties. Yeah, 3 times 50 is 150. And you're going to add that to the fixed running costs, right? So 1,350. And as you can see, we go up by 50 ties every time. 50 ties, another 50 ties, another 50. I put in an extra column, which we don't need. So every time you see how we add on $150, we're going to add on $150 every time. It's going to form a straight line when we put these all together, hence the name. Okay. So that'll be 1,500. 1650. You guys can tell me if my numbers are right when you crunch these on a calculator if you so prefer. Okay? But I'm just going up by 150 every single time.